Y'all, can I tell you how this married man, so like, my last video, my last party video actually got taken down by YouTube, which is so annoying. And this is what I'm talking about, these married men in these Kenyan streets, right? So my last video got taken down by YouTube because he reported it as like a privacy violation because he was in the video at the end of the video and he's married. He saw me recording. I told him I was a YouTuber. I told him I was making bit, like footage for YouTube, but I think he was so high at the time, he like didn't really realize that I was really gonna put this on YouTube. So like he was at the end of that video and like reported it to YouTube, wanted me to take the video down. I'm not taking the video down, right? So then um, YouTube messaged me like, oh, let's go through the claims process or whatever, 48 hours to respond. I didn't respond, but it hadn't been 30, 48 hours. But I guess he was calling them, harassing them so much. Like he was threatening lawyers and all this stuff. Like I think he did get a lawyer to contact them. And they took the video down and was like, okay, well, we'll go through the process and then whatever. So I told him I would edit him out. I just needed time to like get home, get situation. But here's my thing. Why are you in the club cheating if you don't want to be seen on video cheating? Stay out the club cheating. People see my YouTube. Yeah, and they saw you cheating in the YouTube. But you were cheating in the club. You were cheating in the club. So what you mad for? A hit dog is gonna holla. A hit dog is gonna holla every time. So this nigga's barking, 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 barking. Nobody told your merry ass to be in my video. If you had a problem, you should have said something then and there, not afterwards on my YouTube. These niggas are funny. Anyways. I miss Kenya already. I was like looking at the prices in the grocery store yesterday and was like, oh, hell a fucking no. Oh my God. Like a full chicken is like $25. 2500 for a full chicken. I might as well just buy a farm. What the fuck? Yeah, but I'm about to go take a bath and live my best life, you guys. Um I started recording once I landed at JFK in New York from Nairobi. Getting out of Nairobi was really tough because I just had so much stuff. And I even left a lot of my stuff at my friend's house. But I still just had so much stuff. My bags were overweight. It was just a lot going on. But... I slept throughout the flight because I had went out the night prior and it was I was just exhausted. So I had to go from JFK to Washington, D.C. area where I live. The ticket was a one way for eight hundred dollars and the flight is 15 hours long. So I was just exhausted. And then a two hour flight from New What's York. What's up, you guys? I am busted, <laughs> tired, exhausted, but I'm here with my best friend. She is the one who picked me up from the Hello, airport. Because I have a family full of losers. Oh my God. Everyone's like, oh my God, Brittany. not true. I'm working. I'm doing this. Nobody wants to come get working, me. Working? They're working? People are working? <laughs> Nobody yeah. wanted to come Real get losers. your girl, y'all. But um, I'm here and I am in my friends. Car. My stuff is in the backpack. All um, of it. We are about to stop at Where two of go? my favorite places. We're gonna go to Chipotle, and then we're gonna go to Aldi or Trader Joe's, maybe to get some wine. Okay. Y'all, I'm back home and I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling very good. I'm gonna talk to you guys in my love letter to Kenya video and let you know what I have going on, my plans, and all these things. But yeah, y'all, we're home. This is like literally my best friends so i know y'all seen a lot of people on this channel so like, many y'all seen a lot of people on this channel simone tadre fast sally just a whole bunch of people um who i just i have a lot of friends that i've made Wisdom. but in my life i have only had one best friend and this is my best friend let me focus on her face you know tom so I'm oily too, girl. I have on no makeup. It's gonna <laughs> you know, I thought I liked this red hair, but it's actually giving ghetto. I'm happy to have you home. <laughs> you can, I'll see you take care of that. <laughs> I might dye it black. I don't know, y'all. Is the red giving ghetto? Be it's, honest. I 
feel like it's kind of giving ghetto. I wanted to do something different. It but is. At least it didn't blue. Yeah, nah, I kept it like normal. Yeah, so like I was saying, y'all, this has been my best friend. This is my son's godmom. Um, fourth grade. Fourth grade. We have known each other since the fourth grade. Literally, we have been best friends since. I the can't fourth lose grade. her, you guys. I'm um, like trying four times. Yeah, Jesus. no, I would never let her go. Um, do you see, I'm breaking out. I have eczema. Well, I've been we'll stressed. My eczema is so bad right now. Ugh. Anyways, you guys, damn, it's hella traffic. Welcome, welcome, back. welcome back. Welcome back to the. DC. Welcome back to the DMV. It's hella fucking traffic. Yeah, let's stop and get wine, bro, so I can enjoy this ride home. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, you guys, this is Brayson's godmom. Um, I actually yeah, hooked sure. her up with the love of her life and her future husband is my baby daddy's best friend. <laughs> and they met at my son's Those baby shower. No, no. It was the baby, was shower. the baby shower. And then rekindled at the christening. Wow. Yeah, so I awesome. am a YouTuber, educator, matchmaker. Let's, let's, <laughs> easy, steady on. Steady yeah, because they're still together. We so are. they have actually outlasted me and my baby daddy by nine times. <laughs> nine times over. Oh, man, oh, Several man, oh, man, oh, man. Yeah, so the plan is to just go get some things, maybe pick up racing. I don't know. We'll see. This kid has a game tomorrow. Lisa. He doesn't. He's uh, tomorrow's his um I called Bo. We me and Mo talked. Cause I was like, hmm, should I come get Brace in? He's like, please. And then I was like, um, I'll think of it and let you know. I don't know if I need to like get settled first. Just give myself like a little couple hours to get settled before Mo I come like, straight. He has a game. She can't just interrupt him. Like, oh, she can do it. That's what most he was like, You're lucky he doesn't have a game this weekend. <laughs> and I was like, and then I was like, okay, well, enjoy your daddy free, your um kid free weekend. And he's like, I do have another child. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so welcome back, you guys. <laughs> welcome back. I'm going to take you guys on a ride with me. I got dropped off at IAD, which is Dulles. So in D.C., there's three main airports. BWI, which is on the Baltimore end of D.C. Like, because, you know, it's the DMV, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. So BWI is in Maryland. Reagan is in D.C., D.C. Technically, it's in Virginia, but it's right outside of D.C. And then Dulles is like in Virginia, like the little pocket of the top of Virginia where I live. So this is easier for me to get home this way through Dulles because I do live in Woodbridge, Virginia. So when I say, oh my God, I live in DC, I live in DC. I did used That's to live in mean. DC. I used to live in DC. I went to school in DC, but my actual residential address is Prince William County, Woodbridge in Virginia. We're just frauds. So I do miss Kenya already, you guys. I was so pissed off when I went to buy some water and y'all would not believe it was 370 shillings. 370 shillings for water. You know how many? Three, three seventy dollars. I've only ever dealt with euros. Three seventy. Why was it that much? That was my question. I, I just, I just, I'm at a loss. You guys, I'm at a loss. So, ah, <sighs> yeah. You guys get ready for the American content. Here's my American friend and in, in our little American car. <laughs> <laughs> our American car. On, on our American road, oh, on the way boy. to my American home. You guys, stay tuned. To the traffic back to the highways my city is super suburban I do live on the outskirts of DC not in actual DC you guys so my friend is actually a news presenter anchor anchor don't call me a news presenter I'm an anchor I hold that desk I own that desk or wherever I'm standing presenting the news anchor anchor there you go. <laughs> And we are both on career sabbaticals. So she just ended Perfect. two she, and a half years. She was two working for two years. and a half years for a company. Station. A station. I'm going to include your clip. Play it. <laughs> I'm really going to include your clip. Uh-huh. I'm out of work. Make it fire. Isn't she so cute? You make it's sure you guys go follow her YouTube. That was her. But um, so it. basically, we're both now at home. Reconnecting. Visiting. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. We're vis revisiting our lives. Like, I miss being home with you, Bernie. I miss being... This is our element. This is our... Maybe not this. Girl, this is not my home. This is I was, this my, area. I was, my people were stolen. 
this is not gonna help. But, um, what is that done to you? <laughs> <laughs> she also is home at the same time that I'm home. So she was living in Louisiana. As you guys know, before I moved to Ghana and Kenya, I was staying um, in Atlanta. So I have not even really lived at home for a long time. Um, Brayson was with me in Atlanta. And then I would just like go back and forth for whatever. Um, so this is like our first time being home, home together. No rushing the flight For a no, long anything. time. So she's like looking for a news for news anchor job. There we go. A perfect news anchor job. I'm looking for a perfect remote job and doing my history series. And yeah, so it's just kind of like a... What do they call the perfect storm? That's it what is we're the, perfect it's the perfect storm. storm. It's a good time for us to like. We can double date. You can go and grab a mo or whatever. I can bring my invisible man <laughs> and our, our, our double date. <laughs> I bring Brayson. That would be really nice. I would like that. That's much. a vibe. Me, you, Mook, and Brayson. That made me so happy, Jim and Lee. Yeah. So um, I can't really hit the streets, y'all. Mm -hmm. The way that I do in Nairobi, I can't do that Good. here. Well, no, I, I can't because um, my family, first of all, they're just not really like big party people and things are not even open like that. Like it's a very, where I live is a very suburban family area. So in order for me to really, really go have fun, I'd have to drive. To I'd have to drive a good amount and then also things close earlier there. So how like, early? Like three. What the hell is wrong with you? How late do you need to be? Bitch, I don't go to the club until one. That's insane. That's crazy. You <laughs> need to be in bed and huddle. Girl, Nairobi heads home at seven. No. Seven, I'm in REM cycle two. <laughs> and we're cuddling. And I'm being woken up. Honey, at seven, I'm looking for the after spot. I got your after Ooh, Shisha. Spot. What? Shisha spots. Is that weed? Shisha is hookah. See, you guys, this is that American thing I was talking about. So we say hookah over here, but it's shisha over there. Shisha is hookah. Shisha sounds like like the dressed up term for weed. For when I joy. say hookah, people are like, really? It's she. So from the airport to my actual town that I live in is about a 45 minute drive. Thankfully, my friend picked me up because Uber prices are just crazy right now. When I looked at the Uber price, I think it was like almost $45 for me to get home, which could essentially fill up her entire tank. So I was really happy that she picked me up. It was just so like nostalgic almost. Like I don't want to be one of those people who are like, oh my God, like it's just not like Nairobi. Like that's not the vibe I'm trying to get, but I just am not even used to like seeing a lot of the things that are here. A lot of things are just off to me. Like stoplights that are actually being enforced and functioning and like so many lanes on just the road and not the highways just things that like are not really my norm at this time so it's always like a new feeling when I come home to America from being somewhere else for so long so we did stop at a grocery store just so we could kind of like get some wine and snacks for the ride to Woodbridge from the airport. There's a Goodwill Center. That's where people drop off like their used clothes and stuff. But yeah, it was cool. We just got a little wine, got a little snack. I was so happy to see her, y'all. Another thing that is so different when you're in America literally is the self-checkout line, which is just something that is not in most foreign countries, I want to say, that are not like European and things, the self-checkout line. The cheap prices of certain things just kind of made me happy because like hummus, cheese, wine, all these things that are actually really expensive in Nairobi can be found cheaper here in America versus, you know, there are situations where some things are way more expensive in America, but can be found cheaper in Nairobi. So I right now am basking in those things that are American cheap that were Nairobi expensive. So yeah, here we are walking to her car. Um, there's not really many places in my town that have like underground parking and like whatever it's just a very spaced out suburban town yeah 
So this is closer to where my baby daddy lives. He lives in Dale City, which is not far from where I'm going to be staying in Woodbridge, Virginia. So we're riding through his little neighborhood. I love the trees, super green space, y'all. I'm like such a suburban girl, honestly. I am a product of suburbia, which is why when everyone's like, oh my God, you sound white. And I'm like, dude, like I grew up around suburban people. I didn't grow up in Atlanta. I'm not really like a hood chick. Like sometimes the suburban areas can look kind of country, but here we are going to pick up my son and surprise him. I was so excited to see him and happy that it was very close up the street. I'm gonna lock it too. All right, you guys, we are at Brayson's house and we're gonna surprise him. He doesn't know I'm coming. I lied to him and told him I'm coming on Sunday. That's excessive doorbell ringing, by the way. Mom? It's Titi's baby! How are you? Oh. Oh. Are you Tommy? Yeah, I saw that from the window. I knew oh that was going to happen. I so annoyed. Hi, Titi. Hi, Mom. Get your stuff. You saw me out the window. That's not even I fun. Look at my phone. phone. Still well taken care of. Still yeah, I'm about well to switch. I'm about to switch our phones out. Look, I've been I had this phone since like June 21st and it's still good. No, like May or June 2021 and it's still good. Yeah, mommy's just cracked. Year. Yeah, give me your phone. Mom. I'm about to switch our phones because no. my phone is cracked. No. That's not my phone. You can't take care of it. My Get phone is game, so son. cracked. You Get it, Gabe. Short. You used to be a little baby. Do you know that? Oh, Let's go home so I can cuddle you. I'm four. No, I'm a big boy. What are you talking Why? about? Why? No one asked you if you were a big boy or not. No. Uh, well, I'm, I'm four foot eight. Be careful, there's food down there. Please four foot first. eight. Wait, where's my bag? I put it in the trunk. Oh, uh, your feet. Uh, yeah. Tell me some facts That's about Virginia. Three months we're going to be learning about Asia. What do you know about Virginia? I know it's I know Kentucky to so North Carolina's to the south, Maryland's to the north, mm -hmm. Kentucky's to the west. No, Kentucky's to the west. Um, but really, it's West Virginia that's to oh, the yeah. west. So Kentucky is is Kentucky and West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Um and what are some of the exports? Is Southwest. Who were some of the most famous Virginians? We didn't learn. We're just learning states. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington was from Virginia. Thomas Jefferson, Lincoln. James Monroe, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was from Illinois, West Illinois. where Chicago is. Where So if there's one thing that is going to take place in America, it's going to be hella, 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 hella places for you to eat, get food, buy food, um, hella restaurant options, drive throughs everything. So one of my favorite places to shop for groceries is Wegmans, you guys. There's not even a lot of Wegmans throughout America. Like it's a very specific um grocery store chain and as you guys can see it's honestly like a mall for food so they have like pre-packaged desserts and stuff that they make every day you could get sushi you could get seafood pizza sub soup um this is just the meat aisle alone this is just the cheese section y'all this big old section behind here 
it's just all cheese. Like, it's wild. It's so many options up in there. So we went through self-checkout. I got myself a little cheese plate situation to go home with. More wine, because you know the vibes are the vibes. And yeah. My sister stays in like one of the nicest areas in Woodbridge, Virginia that is located right off of the highway. So in the DMV area and many other cities, of course, like LA, it's really advantageous to live very close off the highway because traffic is so bad. Like people complain about DMV traffic so much because one of our main highways is an international highway so people from Miami are driving through this to get to New York do you know what I'm saying and it like kind of messes up like local traffic so she lives in a really really good area which is easy for me right now because my car is not up here and I want to be able to like go into DC pretty easily pretty quickly so it works out great for me um she has an amazing car my sister is that chick you guys she really is doing her thing I'm going to do an interview with her and my other sister, Deshauna, just so you guys can kind of like meet them and feel the vibes. Yeah, but this is my little place that I'm going to be staying. Super sweet. Everyone's super successful. A lot of people up here have government jobs for the most part. Um, that's the main industry up here since we're by D.C. A ridiculous amount. Come say hi. Where's Brayson? He's coming. Just hi. say hi and then bye. Hi, YouTube. Bye. <laughs> Brayson, come say hi and then bye. What up? What up? Brayson, nobody can even see your face. Y'all, when I saw Brayson, he wasn't even trying to give me kisses. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Why weren't you trying to give me a kiss? Because I'm tired. Ah, oh, mom, stop. Ew. Why can't I kiss you? Uh, Y'all, he thinks he's so cool. It's so annoying. <laughs> Why? Are you too cool for kisses? Yeah. Why? No, I don't. That's king. I mean, some pop up even said it. Why do you not believe me? Oh. Uh. I love you. I ran myself a nice little bath, lit some candles. I have not taken a bath bath since I've been in Nairobi, which is really funny because I even have had tubs in my apartments and my Airbnbs, but like I just have not even had the time to like just give myself the stillness to take a bath. I took care of my son's hair. Isn't his hair so cute? And then I had to go do what I've been telling you guys I was gonna do for the longest, which is get a phone. So let's break this down. In America, you do not have to pay full cash for a phone. I got the newest iPhone. I did not have to put money down because if you get a phone plan, they break it up into payments and you can finance it throughout three years. So right now I'm paying like, 3,000 shillings, $30 a month for my iPhone Pro Max, right? And I had to agree to have a phone plan to go along with this phone. I'm getting AT&T for the first time. I was debating about getting a Google Pixel, but I just can't do Samsung because of my MacBook and everyone in my family has Apple, like everyone in the world just has Apple. So he actually convinced me to put it under a business name so that I could write it off on my taxes later. And I didn't have to pay an activation fee because it was registered under a business. So that was the good perk because I've been needing a phone for a while, but I could just not afford to buy one. In Nairobi, it's too much and I cannot pay outright. Like I do not understand how people do this. So anyways, um, this is just a quick walkthrough of Walmart. I stopped at Walmart and Decided I was gonna like get some grocery shopping done. This is like a net, this is all within a couple of days, you guys. This isn't like one day, just to let y'all know. I'm not spending like 
my whole entire life in grocery stores but i'm just trying to like get things in order get snacks for my son y'all walmart just has so much food like oh man um i car four is like as big as it goes for what i'm used to as far as grocery shopping mega grocery shopping in, in nairobi like car four and naiva is like to see an entire aisle dedicated to just meat alone i was kind of disgusted like a lot of the things that I just used to find normal now, I just find like excessive and very disgusting. Oh man, but that's that's a blog for another day. So yeah, um, my sister is such a cutie once again. There's Walmart, um, self-checkout always. Cool, cool, cool. Put your carts back yourself. No one really there helping you. We decided to go out to eat to Brick's Pizza, that was a vibe uh -huh. with my little nephew, and then we went to Duck Donuts as well, y'all, just so fire. much fucking food, bro, it's just everywhere, oh my god, yeah. me no I didn't understand even, like, why you not donuts, here with honestly. me, I just was not interested, I don't really have a Let me take it over for in the way that I used girl. to, um, you I now like searching, searching the wrong I don't place. know, but look at these donuts, y'all, that's my dad, box my guy so yeah um maple bacon donut so that is a maple syrup icing bacon wrapped on it y'all welcome to america oh my god somebody open up a duck donuts in nairobi please please please, please. open up a duck donut my sister is living y'all do y'all see this man over so, um, the last video that I had when I was in the States around March, it was like me talking about how my dad is selling our seven bedroom house and moving into a new, like, smaller house for him and his new wife. This is my dad's new home, so he has significantly downgraded and guess how much this house is y'all this little I know that been here house. Before. that house is almost 700 you have me on your side it's absolutely ridiculous the housing market here is disgusting and what really really tricks me is that they can still take your houses from you if you do not pay your property taxes like land ownership here is just ridiculous there's chipotle my favorite restaurant that i've been talking about when you go to and that just kind of wraps it up, y'all. That's just what I did in the first couple of weeks. I am spending this time just indulging in everything I want to indulge in and giving myself peace. I'm home. I'm in my room at my sister's house, um, and I love it here. It's very peaceful. I'm home. I have two objectives for the next two months. And I like making these life update videos because, honestly, like it holds me accountable. It holds me accountable for the things that I want to do. So I have... Two objectives for the next two months. Return back to Kenya in three months because I want to go to Nigeria first. So situate myself to go to Nigeria for a month and then come back to Kenya in three months by, the, by December. Return with a business plan. A business plan, something solid that I can like hold on to, I don't know what country, but I want to invest and create a business in Africa. So I want to come up with a business plan, get investments, situate myself to go to Nigeria in the next two months and then also get a flight to Kenya. Third goal, get a remote job. I need a remote job that I actually enjoy. I have decided I am done teaching in the classroom. I'm done doing things in that type of capacity that is going to get me fired. For my personality and the things I like to do, there's a morality, like, there's a morality issue when it comes to being a stereotypical teacher, right? So I just have to realize, like, I'm done in the classroom. So I need to find a remote job as well. Spend as much time with my son as possible. Um, and I want to get him into some type of private tutoring type of situation for coding before I leave as well. So focus on bracing, my plan out, building a business, and finding a remote job that I enjoy. Those are my four objectives. Oh, and my history series, and my history series. 
So that's my big five. I'm finishing my history series while I'm here. Hold me accountable, you guys. Hold me accountable, please. Finishing my history series, finding a remote job, getting Brayton situated when it comes to coding and other things. He's really busy with football, which I'm like actually looking forward to recording for you guys because I want you guys to like really see how serious children's football is here. His schedule is very busy. I was actually very lucky to... um. Do you guys want to come say hi to my YouTube? Yeah. I was actually very lucky to come home on a weekend where he didn't have a football game. So it was easy for me to like pick him up so that we could kind of chill. This is my nephew and my son coming. Yeah, so those are my goals. Um, I'm going to be teaching my nephew. I'm going to be private tutoring them like I did. During Corona, I actually like got them a grade ahead. During Corona, when I was at my dad's house for the whole of Corona before I came to Ghana and Kenya... I was like just private tutoring my nephew and my son and I actually made them so advanced but actually they went back to normal when they went back to school because the schools don't even teach that much so anyways long story short I'm home I'm working on finding Kenyans and other just Africans in general to interview and I'm working on getting a job that's number one priority I'm not like, I'm not bougie. Y'all know I keep it 100% real. So I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. Like I'm about to get unemployment. That's the good thing about living in America. I'm getting unemployment. And I'm about to apply for food stamps. Like I'm not too proud, honey. I pay my taxes to America and I don't want to work just like any old job. Like I don't want to work any old regular schmegler job here. So until I find the job that I want and deserve, I'm about to get on unemployment. They pay you if you've been fired or like, um your job let you go for financial reasons so i'm gonna get on unemployment they pay you like a good amount of money a month and then i'm gonna get food stamps so i can like just buy food and stuff that's the good thing about america that i can't knock i mean they're gonna take care of you so i ain't too proud to beg honey i'm definitely getting on that unemployment and then my friend who's gonna be y'all see her later the one who picked me up from the airport she just ended her job she didn't get fired you know the contract just ended so i'm about to she's about to get on unemployment too and there's nothing wrong with that y'all trust me like like I've, I've been telling y'all from the beginning i ain't bougie i'm gonna work the system and collect my unemployment and my food stamps while i lay in this bed <laughs> <laughs> Because there's never too much money. You can never have too much money. So, yeah, you guys. Um, I'm, I am happy to be home. I'm so comfortable. I love being home, seeing my family. It's a vibe. So, thank you guys for rocking with me, caring about me, being interested in my story. And, yeah, I love you guys.